Daniel and David Aragona, two short priced favorites in the first two graded stakes races on Belmont Stakes Saturday. Mona Moy Girl basically cementing her status as the queen of this division. Give the best horse the best trip, you get a big performance. Yeah, a few of us took shots against her, kind of thinking one day she'd take a step backwards, but she just shows up every time and she did it again today. You know, a pretty uneventful race for her. She just kind of slotted in behind the two speeds, got that trip drafting in behind them. And when they swung around in the stretch, um, she actually was very professional down the lane. She's a horse that in the past has a tendency to like drift in and out, but today she was straight as an arrow and she got it done. Uh, you saw that in the Kentucky Oaks when she bumped Wonder Godot in the late stages of that race. Uh, very nice performance. She has wonderful tactical speed. She's the kind of filly that can basically put her rider Florent Giroux wherever he wants to be in the race, whether it be on the lead or from off the pace. And I guess the questions now for any handicap is you cannot doubt her quality is how far does she really want to go? We've seen her succeed in the mile and an eighth race in the Kentucky Oaks. We've seen her succeed when an easy walking on the lead winner of the Ashland. We've seen her here at a one turn mile. I'm assuming we go to the coaching club American Oaks next. Could she get an Alabama mile and a quarter? I'm doubtful. I mean, we saw even today going at the end of this mile race, she was kind of easing up a little bit. Maybe it's because she was just in front and she had put the rest of that field away. Uh, but she seems like a horse that sometimes is, you know, not really finishing off her races as strongly as you'd like to see for a horse that's thinking about stretching out in distance. So a mile and eighth, we know she could do it. A mile and a quarter, a little iffy still. Let's talk about the runner up. Talk Viv to me because I really thought she ran well. She was involved in a bit of a pace warfare with Moonshine Memories, a quality filly in her own right. And they were going pretty fast the first quarter of a mile and not only fast, but head and head for the lead. And Talk Viv Teville, though no match for Mona Moigel, showed a lot of determination in the stretch. No, it's not an easy trip to be in a race long duel like that. I mean, they weren't going that fast, but they was, you know, Moonshine Memories is a nice filly, and uh, she easily put her away at the top of the stretch, and uh, just was no match for the winner, but there was a big gap back to the rest of the field, and a nice step forward for that filly. Perhaps a test uh, filly, or do you think, that think she's so. a, a filly that you'd at least give one shot around two turns? Yeah, I mean, there are plenty of opportunities around one turn for these fillies up at Saratoga, so I mean, you would think they would focus on those races, because the two turn race is a mile and eight, that's probably a little much for her. Were you disappointed with the performance of Caledonia Road? It just didn't seem any fire here. Yeah, you know, the real question after her prep race was, was that just a prep or was she ready to go that day? And she just hasn't stepped forward since her two-year-old season. It seems like that might be the case because she just could never get involved today. Mona Moy Girl, the dominating figure in the three-year-old Philly division, another big victory in the Acorn. Our Peter Thomas Fornatel talked to winning jockey Florent Giroux after the Acorn. Florent, what does it feel like to be riding the best three-year-old Philly in the country? Feels good, you know. Uh, hopefully, she can keep on going, you know, through the year. Uh, it's great to ride those kind of horses, you know. Uh, she reminds me a little bit of uh, Gun Runner. I would say she's my uh, female version of Gun Runner. Hopefully, she can improve, you know, uh, with age. And uh, she's doing all the things, you know, you ask her uh, in the morning. She's maturing very nicely and she's developing also, also very nicely physically. And uh, I think today was probably one of our best races. Very nice and composed before the race, after the race, and uh, most uh, importantly, during the race. She started very nicely, and uh, I didn't even did her, hit her one time. You know, she was all business all the way to the wire, and I'm uh, looking forward, you know, for the future races with her this year. If you had to say what her, you thought her best distance would be, what would you say? The mile today. I was, we were, we know from the beginning the flat mile is not a problem. We are a little bit worried, you know, about the mile eight since she has that natural speed. But uh, she shows, you know, uh, she was the best horse also in the Kentucky Oaks, you know. Philip came to challenge her, you know, at the eight pole. She pulled her away, galloped out great. I mean, uh, I think so far she's the leader uh, three or three in her division. Hopefully she can keep on going. It's a long year and um, I'm hoping, you know, finger crossed she can keep on going. One last question. You're riding in the Belmont later. What are the tactics going to be? Uh, I don't really know. You know, there's a couple of horses who have speed. Uh, my horse has a little bit of tactical speed. Merci. Hopefully, uh, I can place my horse, you know, give him a fair trip. And, uh, you know, that's a good thing. The Belmont is a mile and a half. Not many horses ever tried that kind of distance. Hopefully, my horses, you know, keep on going and you never know. Merci beaucoup and Godspeed, my friend. Okay. Merci.